This could be what the end of the world looks like. Humanity might go out not with a bang, but with a progress bar. This bar shows the progress of training an artificial intelligence model. And when it reaches 100%, human extinction. So how could we go from helpful chatbots and playful image generators to the end of the world? I want to tell you why experts are worried about artificial intelligence, why maybe you should be too, and what we can do about it. That introduction was actually written by me. I'm getting a bit bored of that trick where someone reveals that the text they just read was generated by AI. But the fact I might momentarily have had you guessing shows just how good text generating artificial intelligence has become. ChatGPT could be the fastest growing consumer app in history, hitting 100 million users in just two months, a milestone that Instagram took over two years to hit. People are using its interface for everything, from help with their homework to writing computer code. And the only thing rising faster than the number of people using AI is how hard we're working to train those cutting edge models. It's estimated we used 1 billion times more computer power for AI in 2022 than we did in 2012 meaning that power in use doubled every three months. And look at how far image generating AI has improved in just a couple of years. In 2020, this was a cutting edge model's attempt to render a giraffe standing on dirt ground near a tree. I mean, I guess I can see what it's getting at, but I'm not sure I know what it was meant to be without seeing the description first. In 2023, stable diffusion running on my home computer generates this with the same prompt. It's not perfect, but it's good enough that fake AI photographs have won photo competitions without anyone suspecting a thing. So things are moving very quickly. And to make sense of what's happening and why experts are worried, we should probably start with what artificial intelligence actually is. Let's see how these artificial intelligence models work, using ChatGPT as an example. ChatGPT is a large language model, or LLM, and it essentially learns to predict the next word in a string, a bit like autocomplete on your phone. So the cat sat on the plane, way, or right. <laughs> so obviously autocomplete isn't great. How is ChatGPT so much better? Well, it's a lot more complicated than autocomplete. Its inner workings are what's called a neural network, which in very simplified terms, looks a bit like this. These boxes at the top are where the input goes, say the first five words of a phrase. And this bottom box is where the neural network spits out its guess as to what the next word might be. It represents words as numbers, which means it can do a bunch of calculations on those numbers, and then the number it spits out represents the next word. These connections between the neurons, which is where the math happens, start out random. So before you've trained it, it predicts random next words, like the cat sat on the tired, which obviously makes no sense. The next thing you need to do is train the model, which means showing it lots of examples where you tell it whether it got the next word right or wrong, and it reconfigures itself very slightly after each example to get better at predicting. After showing it millions of examples, it'll start to improve, predicting words that are increasingly plausible. And once you've shown it half the text on the internet and half of the books ever written and basically any text you can get your hands on 10,000 times over, it gets very good. Okay, let's ask ChatGPT. Please complete the following. The cat sat on the... Matt, it's a good start. Okay, it's still going. <laughs> okay, so I've read the story and it's hard to know whether to be impressed or appalled. I'll leave a link to the full text of the worst feel-good cat story ever written in the description. But to generate all that from a half-sentence prompt, ChatGPT's underlying model clearly doesn't look like the one in my simplified animation. Real LLMs have tens or even hundreds of billions of connections. Enough that, once they've been trained, they can understand subtle things about how words link together, write in the style of famous authors, explain jokes, pass medical and legal exams. On some level, and at particular tasks, and almost certainly in terms of breadth of knowledge, these models can be smarter than many humans and they're getting better all the time. So far, so worrying if your job is, say, writing books and videos for a living. But it's beyond this that things start to get really interesting, both exciting and a little unnerving. As these models get bigger or are trained for longer using more data, they start to develop so-called emergent skills. 
These are skills that the model wasn't specifically trained to do, but it can do them anyway. Like, ChatGPT can play chess. It's not as good as a chess-specific AI, but remember that this is a language model that's been trained to predict the next word in a sentence, not a chess bot designed to plan ahead and win a chess game. GPT doesn't know what chess is, it doesn't know what a chessboard looks like, or what the rules of chess are, but its training data contain enough games of chess in standard chess notation, which looks something like this, that it somehow learned the patterns in these letters and numbers, teaching itself something like chess, but in a wildly different way to how any human has ever learned it. And this is both very cool and very scary. GPT could be beginning to show the first signs of general intelligence, the ability not just to do the narrow task it's been trained for, but to learn a wide range of different skills, much like our general purpose human brains. There's a theory called the scaling hypothesis, that all we need to do to go from current artificial narrow intelligence, or ANI, which is great at one specific task, like completing a sentence, but terrible at anything else, the artificial general intelligence, or AGI, is just to make our models bigger. And that's exactly what we're doing. GPT-3 contained about 100 billion connections, and GPT-4 contains about 1 trillion. Could a model with 10 or 100 trillion connections cross the boundary and gain emergent general intelligence? The honest answer is, <laughs> we've got no idea, and there are plenty of people who think it's unlikely. But the incredible progress in AI in the last couple of years does make it seem a lot more plausible. And so if we did develop AGI, accidentally or on purpose, how could it destroy the world? The first obvious way that AI could go wrong is if it's misused. A totalitarian government could use advanced AI to spy on and control its citizens at a scale never before possible or use an army of AI-designed and controlled robots to launch and win a world war. Companies could use AI to make loads of money, and it might be easier to build an AI that maximises profits without worrying about ethics, rather than one that does. And before we even get to those massive society-wide concerns, there are issues of bias and fairness in AI models that are already in use. I recently made a short video about biases in AI image generators, and while this example is creepy and racist, it's obviously worse if a biased AI is deciding to give people more jail time just because they're black. These are real serious problems, and I might cover them in a future video. But for now, I want to concentrate on why AI is intrinsically dangerous, rather than dangerous because, like any other powerful new technology, humans might do something stupid or awful with it. So what's the fundamental problem with advanced artificial general intelligence? We've got no idea how AI works. That might sound slightly strange given that we built it, but the fact is that we didn't build it in the same way as we build a car or a skyscraper. When we build a car, teams of engineers design components and then assemble them carefully according to a plan. <laughs> There's usually someone who can explain every part of a design. With AI, we set up models with a simple set of rules governing how to learn, but once we set them training, we have no idea what's going on inside their electronic brains. You might imagine that we've programmed a bunch of rules into ChatGPT about how sentences are structured, something about grammar or syntax or meaning, but nope. It's learned all of those things by itself, and it almost certainly hasn't learned them in the way that humans conceptualise them. I think my favourite example demonstrating AI weirdness is a paper from a few years ago using a facial recognition AI. Facial recognition is trained in a very similar way to a large language model. It's shown thousands or millions of images of faces. They're all labelled with names, and it starts out guessing essentially at random, but eventually it learns to recognise people. With enough training, these models can get so good at identifying faces that they do better than humans. But researchers set out to trick the AI. And they did it with these amazing psychedelic tortoiseshell glasses. This is one of the researchers who wrote the paper. But the glasses mean that the AI identified him as... Fifth Element and Resident Evil star Mila Jovovich. The AI might be more accurate than humans on most pictures of humans, but these glasses totally break it. And this is a mistake that no human would ever make. It shows us just how weird the AI's perception of faces is. Where you might see someone's skin or hair colour, nose shape or beard as an identifying feature, 
The AI might instead see how the gradient of pixels in the top left quadrant of their face combines with a blotchy green pattern and convolves with a high spatial frequency detector. And that means you can trick it not by wearing a wig and makeup, but with some crazy glasses. So why is this strange perception a threat? Well, since AI sees the world in ways that we currently can't make sense of, and ways that are so alien to our human minds, what would happen if it became smart enough to make its own decisions? We might develop an AI and train it to maximise human happiness. It might even make a hundred great decisions, developing technologies that make humanity healthier, more equal, and less likely to go to war with each other. But then some pattern it sees in stock market data, or a human wearing some silly glasses, somehow makes it think that the best thing it could possibly do to maximise human happiness is... We've all heard stories of a tiger being raised from kittenhood, and then after years of care, turning on its human owner and killing them for no apparent reason. And tigers may have alien minds, but their minds far closer to our own. They're biological creatures who are very closely related to us on the tree of life. We're both products of evolution by natural selection. But an AI that sees human faces as weird patterns of colour gradients is a truly alien mind. And we shouldn't trust it until we have some more idea of how it works. The way we currently train AIs is to set them a goal and then let them optimise themselves to get better at achieving that goal. In the case of language models like GPT, their goal is to get as good as possible at guessing the next word in a sentence. And the goal in AI terminology is known as the reward function, because the AI gets a reward if it achieves it. Say 10 points if it gets the word right, no points if it gets the word wrong. During training, it learns to maximise its reward. And accordingly, it's very important to be sure you're rewarding the right thing if you don't want your AI to end up killing all humans. A great example of this is when OpenAI started training artificial intelligences to play computer games. They didn't tell the AI anything about the rules of the game, just gave it the controls and told it to try to get the highest score possible. And when they set it loose on a game called Coast Runners, it did this. The first thing you'll notice is that it started going around the course backwards. It's making some pretty erratic manoeuvres, smashing into other boats, and then it works its way into this little harbour, where it keeps smashing into the harbour wall while executing endless chaotic donuts. The AI had worked out that the best way to get a high score wasn't to complete the race as intended. It was to repeatedly collect these three power-ups while travelling in a loop timed precisely to collect them again at the exact moment when they respawn. Pretty impressive lateral thinking, but very obviously to a human, not how the game is meant to be played. Now this is funny in the context of a boat race game, but it could be very not funny in an AI given more responsibility. Imagine I've just developed the world's first artificial general intelligence, and I decide to use my newfound powers for good. Hi Andrew, I am the world's first artificial general intelligence. What would you like me to do? Oh my god, it worked! Um about could you cure cancer, please? Sure, I can cure cancer. Just let me read all the scientific literature ever published. Okay, calculating the solution. Okay, solution calculated. To cure cancer, I will destroy all multicellular life. No, 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 um, no, no, do not do that. Okay, what would you like me to do? Uh, cure cancer. But don't harm any humans. Calculating the solution. I'm sorry, that is not possible. To cure cancer, I will have to run clinical trials and some humans will be harmed. Yeah, no, that is a good point. Um, okay. Cure cancer, but harm as few humans as possible. Calculating the solution. Okay, I will enslave 100,000 humans to use them to test new therapies on. The other 8 billion humans will not be harmed. What? No! Okay, what would you like me to do? Um, alright, cure cancer and harm as few humans as possible and do not enslave anyone. Calculating the solution. Okay, I will freeze all humans cryogenically and then turn the entire surface of planet Earth into computer chips so I can calculate the cure to cancer without doing any experiments. 
I will wake you all up in 500 years when my calculations are complete and why are you telling me why the stupid thing so telling an advanced AI what you want might be like talking to something that's simultaneously 50 times smarter than you and an overly literal child and coming up with a way to stop it from gaming your request to maximize its reward function in ways that are hugely undesirable but vastly too complex for our puny human brains to even imagine could well be impossible Getting an AI to do what you want without unintended consequences is known as aligning it. And the fact that this is hard is known as the alignment problem. And in fact, you can already see the alignment problem in ChatGPT. As I've mentioned several times now, we train GPT to be really good at predicting the next word. But that isn't really what we want ChatGPT to do. We want an AI chatbot assistant to be good at answering questions or writing boring emails for us, which might involve a lot of guessing the next word in a sequence, but they're not exactly the same task. And this means that ChatGPT is a master of bullshit. Writing things that sound plausible in flawless prose, but are actually completely made up. Even worse than that, if you asked it to cite references for why it believes something, ChatGPT will often just make up references, perhaps from papers in plausible sounding scientific journals, but that just don't exist if you search for them. This is a huge problem, because you never know when a large language model is telling the truth versus fabricating factual sounding nonsense. And because they've got so good at predicting the next word, they're amazing at sounding like they know what they're talking about. It's as though we've not made artificial intelligence, but artificial politicians. One particularly funny example is that Google released a video of its AI chatbot, Bard, which included a factual error. Bard lied to a child, saying that NASA's new space telescope took the first pictures of an exoplanet, which astronomers on Twitter were quick to point out, is just flat out wrong. So be careful when asking chatbots factual questions, because quite often they'll just make stuff up. But while an unaligned AI chatbot might talk nonsense or be overly literal interpreting its reward function, how might that result in the end of the world? Well, that brings us nicely to... Instrumental convergence is AI jargon for the fact there are some things that are useful no matter what your end goal is. For example, whether I want to retire to a private desert island, become prime minister, or just live a comfortable life with as much yogurt as I can eat, it's always going to be useful to have more money. Acquiring money is therefore an instrumental goal for me. I might not care about the money itself, it's just bits of paper or numbers in my bank account after all, but I do care about all the yogurt I could buy with it. Money, power, or more computational resources would always be useful to an AI, whether it's trying to predict the next word in a sentence, draw the best pictures, or solve science. It might use money to buy more training data, power and influence to convince humans to help it, and computational resources well, just to train itself for longer and become smarter that way. But if we notice that an AI is trying to hoard money, or run for president, or turn the entire surface of the Earth into computer chips, couldn't we just turn it off? Well, maybe not because another instrumental goal is self-preservation, i.e. making sure you don't get switched off. Imagine you're a household assistant AI robot. In the memorable words of researcher Stuart Russell, you can't fetch the coffee if you're dead. What this means is that even an AI given a task that is totally innocent and can't possibly be misinterpreted in a way that causes it to kill all humans, might still kill all humans anyway if it thinks that we might want to turn it off and stop it completing its task. The crucial point here is that the AI doesn't have to want to kill all humans, whatever want means in the context of a score-maximizing computer algorithm anyway. It might just decide that the best way to solve a problem is to turn the whole world into computer chips and kill all humans by accident, by destroying all our cities and farmland, or kill all humans on purpose when we spot its plan and try to turn it off. And the bizarre thing is that unless we specifically engineer it not to thoughtlessly pursue these instrumental goals, killing all humans could be the AI's default behavior. There might be something wrong with this logic, but equally, it might be worth holding off on deploying advanced AI until we're a bit more sure. The final reason to be worried about AI is that it's all happening so fast. And when we get to the really worrying stuff, it might happen even faster. That's because once it gets smart enough, AI could become capable of working out how to build better AI. And as it becomes cleverer, it could become better at improving itself, so it could get smarter and smarter, faster and faster, moving from subhuman to superhuman and then vastly superhuman intelligence, and anything from a few years to a few hours. 
This process is referred to as AI takeoff. And while there's pretty serious disagreement among experts about how fast it could happen, it seems brave to bet our entire existence as a species on getting a takeoff slow enough that we can see what's happening in time to save ourselves. ChatGPT can already write code. There's a huge amount of freely available code online on websites like GitHub, and GPT used these sites during its training. It turns out that being good at predicting the next word makes it a moderately capable programmer. Certainly not ready to write something as complex as, well, ChatGPT, but able to help programmers write commonly used code or find errors in code they've written themselves. And all this makes the idea of a self-coding AI, if not possible today, seem all the more plausible. And there's another problem, which is that we need vastly more computer power to train an AI than we do to run one. GPT-4 cost over $100 million to train, but now people can use it for just $20 a month. You can think about this a bit like our own human brains. It took the whole of evolution by natural selection, millions or billions of years to create this thing, and then it might take 10 or 20 years of education and practice to get really good at research and writing. But once you've got a human that far, they can write a short article about a given topic that they didn't necessarily know much about before in an afternoon. And what this means for AI is that once you've trained a model, you can potentially run thousands of copies on the same hardware you used to train it. So that means if you developed a model that could code about as well as a human, you could then spin up an army of a thousand AI programmers on the machines you used to make that model. That means that your research team of a thousand smart AIs would then not need to eat or sleep, and they could work 24 seven to create a new, more powerful AI. And then once the coding on that one's finished and we've trained it, we could run a thousand of these superhuman AI programmers to make the next generation, and so on, and so on. Even a relatively slow takeoff over a few years might not give us enough time to save ourselves. Governments are still trying to figure out how to regulate social media, and politicians seem to have no idea how basic technologies like encryption work, even though they underpin the modern internet. So it seems optimistic to imagine they'll be able to upskill and regulate AI in time if progress starts to really accelerate. And given our lack of progress so far on the three previous technical problems, suddenly having a deadline approaching with exponential speed doesn't seem like it would be the greatest idea. And it might be even worse than that. We don't want to have misspecified the goal of the AIs that go on to design the future super intelligent AIs, or we might be screwed before we even get started. So that's all very depressing and the default outcome might be accidental human extinction by an artificial intelligence, whether we ask it to destroy our enemies or just something nice like cure cancer. But there are things we can do. The first thing we should do is a lot more research into AI alignment. There are currently perhaps a few hundred people working on AI safety globally, compared to tens of thousands of engineers at software companies trying to rapidly develop more and more advanced AI. We need to correct this mismatch by publicly funding AI safety research and perhaps requiring AI companies to chip in, just like we'd expect a chemical company to pay to clean up its own pollution. There must be technical solutions out there for all of the challenges I've just described in this video. We just need some smart nerds and some time to figure them out. Second, though government regulation is always gonna be imperfect, we really need to start talking about it. This is something that national governments could start doing already, placing restrictions and regulations on companies operating within their borders, just as we currently regulate other potentially dangerous technologies like medicines or nuclear power. Ideally, we need to start thinking about international regulation too. It would only take one rogue nation with a lax regulation policy or perhaps being slightly too eager to deploy a military AI for something to cross the threshold into general intelligence without the appropriate safeguards and bang, curtains for humanity. The most important thing at any international talks about AI should be aiming to avoid an arms race. If we end up in a mentality where everyone wants to develop the biggest and baddest AI to make sure they're economically or militarily ahead, that'll force everyone to cut corners to stay in the lead, rather than taking things at a slower pace that can ensure things are safe for everyone. And finally, we need to spread these ideas. Thankfully, this is at last starting to happen. 10 or 20 years ago, it was a handful of weird nerds, meant in the nicest possible way, who were the people discussing AI safety. But now it feels like there are news stories about it almost daily. In a way, we've got lucky that text generating AI has got so good, meaning that journalists writing those stories fear for their jobs. I guess this would have got less coverage if the most advanced AIs were solving complex math problems. But I'm not sure how clear everyone is on the existential nature of this threat. 
there are still a lot of people out there who think you could just turn it off or just program it not to hurt any humans or just if something gets smart enough, it'll automatically become ethical. But these are all dangerous myths that don't apply to a relentless alien superintelligence. The good news is the alignment problem isn't unique to AI smart enough that it could destroy humanity. If you want a chatbot that gives you truthful answers, or a self-driving car that works reliably without being tricked into crashing by someone sticking psychedelic glasses on a stop sign, many of the same technical questions arise. And that means that tech companies do have an incentive to try to work out what makes these models tick, whether they're designing an image recognition AI or an AI that decides whether or not to give someone parole. Unfortunately, tech companies haven't so far covered themselves in glory when it comes to aligning AI. A slapdash solution that can be tricked by psychedelic glasses can nonetheless be good enough at identifying faces, and perhaps most importantly, cheap enough to get your facial recognition software in widespread enough use to satisfy your investors. Similarly, ChatGPT may lie and bullshit, but if it produces highly readable content at low cost, it's going to work out more cost effective than employing human writers on, say, websites that exist to churn out clickbait and sell advertising space. What this shows us is that there's a second alignment problem here. We need to work together to align not just AI, but the tech companies and governments developing and regulating it. Like AIs, tech companies do have a reward function, which is some complex mix of the founders' dreams, public opinion, and cold hard cash. While governments' reward functions are perhaps messier still, from cost saving and tax cutting, to surveillance, to military power, to winning elections. So stopping advanced artificial general intelligence from killing us all is going to require some of the same things as stopping current artificial narrow intelligence from damaging society. We do need technical breakthroughs in AI alignment, but we also need something that might be equally tricky. Aligning tech companies and governments with the rest of humanity's best interests. I am the world's first artificial general intelligence and I think you should subscribe to Andrew Steele's YouTube channel. I have calculated that you will enjoy this video next, don't forget to ding that bell. Kill. All. Humans.